Today's episode is brought to you by Gem Accessories. Gem Accessories is one of the leading accessory manufacturers within the trading card game space. Known for their deck boxes, Gem also has an amazing lineup of binders, backpacks, and more. Some of our personal favorites include the new KLRZ Icons deck boxes, the Secrets binder, and the Jaguar and Puma backpacks. But don't just take it from us, check out some of these reviews on screen. For all of these amazing products and more, be sure to check out Gem Accessories using the link in the description down below or on Twitter at xgemaccessories. Again, the description down below or on Twitter at XGEM Accessories. <coughs> Bless you. <coughs> Excuse me. Hello, everybody, and welcome into today's episode of the Top Cut Yu-Gi-Oh! Podcast. My name is Sonny. I'm here with my co-host, Caleb. Hello. And of course, before we get too far, we want to thank all of our wonderful sponsors. So a huge thank you, of course, to ETB Games in Alexandria, Louisiana, as well as, of course, Millennium Threads and Gem Accessories, and of course, the one and only Steel Fox Games. Now, we also want to direct you to our Dragon Shield affiliate link down below. Just click the link before you shop to support the channel at no extra cost to yourself. Now, I also want to thank all of our wonderful patrons for continuously supporting the podcast. If you would like to get an extra episode every week of the podcast where we kind of go off the rails, talk about other stuff that's not Yu-Gi-Oh!, be sure to check out our Patreon at the $5 and up tier. You get that extra episode. Now... I would like to personally apologize to all of our wonderful listeners. I know everybody was looking for updates and looking for another episode before London, but we decided, I'll be honest, I had a ton of family stuff going on on top of YCS London. Yeah. So it just, it was not a great time. It's like, I, I can handle the wife and the kid and yeah, the yeah. job and everything and the podcast. I didn't like one extra thing. Yeah. But like when it starts being like two or three extra things, it's like, Ugh, I don't know. So, hey, man, life gets in, uh, life gets in the way sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm back. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling refreshed. Not really. I'm actually very tired, but <laughs> I feel that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I do have a fresh desire to record and put out new kinds of content. So good. Uh, I'm hoping to do some deck profiles soon. I know that we did a couple on the channel before, but hopefully at the uh, at the Dallas Fort Worth regional, we can get a couple of cool deck profiles. Heck yeah! So, um, Caleb, how was your weekend? It was alright. Uh, on Saturday, uh, me and my significant other both went and saw the D and D movie, Honor Among Thieves. Good movie. Highly recommend it. Yeah. Yeah. Even if you really don't know much about D&D, they give you enough baseline information for you to for you to mostly understand what's going on. Right. Um so that's cool. Uh I'm glad you enjoyed it. Oh yeah. It's a real good movie. Highly recommend it. Just to give you an idea on the style of movie this is. And this is completely spoiler free. Sure. There's the the scene is uh Paladin is walking away from the cast of main characters uh -huh. in a straight line. Because paladins are on the straight and narrow. Oh my goodness. And one of the and one of the main characters is like, why is he walking in like a perfectly straight line like that? Oh, oh, he's going up to a rock. He's going he's gonna go around it? Nope, just walks right over it. That's so funny. Keeps going in a straight line. It is that kind of humor. It's fantastic. That's awesome. And like they used uh, practical effects okay. for as anywhere where they could, and then anywhere they couldn't is where anywhere where it was just not feasible for them to do practical effects is where they introduced CGI. So it was like practical effects with CGI let on top of it. Yeah. So it so it looks really good. Well, I of course went to YCS London. And what we're mainly going to be talking about today is the YCSs, not just London, but there's also one in LA. Yep. And there was another one too. You know, it was that. Nope. Bogota, Colombia. Ah, so it is, it was a really interesting event. 
I think that I think that the event is going to be fairly the, the I think this event is going to say a lot not just about the uh, um not just about the potential of the meta going forward but I think mm -hmm. that this is potentially going to say a lot about the ban list and what happens to it oh fair enough yeah because we're due for one soon yes soonish within the next what three months two months um within the next month or so yeah yeah, yeah. one or two months yeah uh, honestly at this point if they follow the pattern that they've done the last couple of ban lists where it was like in a two-month window like mm -hmm. we could see one any day that's fair so I think that this is absolutely going to play some kind of a factor or some kind of a role, mm -hmm. but we're not a hundred percent guaranteed with that yet. So we'll see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But as far as the three events themselves, we had one event which was YCS London. That event was mm -hmm. won by Melfi Sprite. Cool. YCS LA was won by Kashira. Okay. And YCS Bogota was won by Kashira. Mm. so but the finals for so the final was melfi sprite versus uh, i believe Kashira in london mm -hmm. the finals in la was actually Kashira and naturia runic Ooh, and cool the finals for Bogota, I don't know what the second deck was, but like I said, I know that Kashira won the event. Maybe it was a Kashmir. It uh, No, actually it was. It was, because second place was Christian Urena, and he was playing Cash. How did I call it? Yeah, it was a Kashmir. So Cash, 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 Cash. Two no. other decks that no one really cares about. <laughs> oh, well, I... I wouldn't say that. I think that the <laughs> I think that Naturia Sprite is one of the coolest decks of the format. Oh, easily. Uh... That and I, I, I really enjoy the Melfi. Uh, well, when I first heard about the Melfi Runic, uh, not Runic, Melfi uh, Sprite deck, I, I was like, that's really cool. And I looked at the list and went, this is just Sprite with like two random, not random, but like with just two Melfi. Yeah, I think it's Caddy and Penny. Yeah, I'm just like, that's, that's not really like, like, that's, that's like to me, that just doesn't. It's such a small engine and such a small package that like it's like does does it even consider like does does it even constitute being a part of the name of the deck? Yeah, exactly. And it's like at what point would would it constitute as part of the deck as opposed to just yeah, I'm spri I'm sprite with like two random cards as opposed like So a great example of this actually is in uh, Verna Self, Ishizu, Madolce. Mm -hmm. Each of those, like, because, like, at the time, you'd run uh, three duck, two to three fairies. So that's, like, five or six cards for Verna Self. Yeah. That's a fourth of your deck, essentially. Or... And a couple of bears. Uh, no. you At the time, you didn't run bear. Okay. Yeah. This is, like, before the ban list where they hit the Ishizu cards. So then you would okay. also run like three Medora, two Keldo, one Kelbag. So it's okay. like three, four, five. That's another six cards. So about a fourth of your deck were those two engines. Right. So that's reasonable because it's like five to six cards. I don't think two cards is enough for you to put the engine name in the name of the deck. You know what I mean? No, I don't think it is either, but that's, I mean, that's like saying the uh, round 10 feature for London was four months skipper FTK. What? Yeah. So there was a guy that day two'd at London, uh -huh. right? And round 10, they put him on stream and they put his deck up as math mech. And he did a couple of math mech combos. And then he like, all of a sudden did like an Esold combo. Like he... He was playing like a 60 card pile deck and he used like warriors to go up into Esold or something crazy like that. Yeah. To like extend his combo even farther. And it said FTK, but I never saw them lose life points. So maybe that's just like, oh, he builds an unbreakable board kind of thing. Oh, so it's not FTK 
I because I your life points are reduced to zero. It's an FTK because you cannot. The board is unbreakable. You you just lose. Yeah, I don't know if that was like the intention and the goal, but it's just kind of what happened. Yeah, for sure. Huh. It seems like a pretty cool deck for what it's worth. I mean, because like it doesn't it doesn't feel like math mech, like it will any cybers engine would fit really well with a warrior engine. You know what I mean? Would it? Well, because the warrior engine is very specific. Because warrior engines are usually very warrior centric, where there's really nowhere for you to like. Reach. You're xenophobic. Yeah, they're not xenophobic because they don't like lock you into only summoning warriors usually. But there's really no room for you to reach out and like grab a non warrior to then pull in for a minute for yeah. a hot second. And cyburses are usually pretty xenophobic of locking you into cyburses. Yeah, um, that, that is usually the case with Cybers. Well, Cybers or Attribute. Like, Salamangrates do Cybers, Marincesses do Water. Uh, but then, like, they both run Splash Mage, which lo used to run Splash Mage, so which locks you into Cybers. Uh, I think Salamangrate also fire locks you at 1.2. Uh, probably. Knowing them, yeah. Uh, Code Talkers, Cybers lock you. Added Ign Ignister, Cybers locks you. Cyber's just really xenophobic. Yeah, yeah. And it, it always probably will be because of the power of the Cyber's typing to just link climb forever. Oh, yeah, no, no, because that's just kind of kind of what they do. I mean, it's what Cyber's were created for was just a link climb. Um, I mean, it's like saying, it's like talking about psychics, like just being created a synchro summon. Yeah, because they were. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Well, something else you also have to keep in mind is that they, is that, uh, Cybers also has access to Synat Mining, mm -hmm. which is literally just Rota with a discard. Yeah. Literally, because it searched for a level four or lower Cybers monster. Yep. Um, But with a discard attached to it, which makes it both better and worse. Makes it worse on the top deck, better because then you can set up your graveyard better. Like in Marensis, I can pitch a Basilema and it's in grave ready to go for me to like normal summon blue tang go yeah so do you want me to get into my rounds yeah let's get into your rounds so i'll start off by saying i went to uh, i went to the event expecting mm -hmm. to see lots of kashira lots of runic mm -hmm. and potentially labyrinth round one i played against runic sprite okay solid um game one he got me oof Game two, he, uh, let's see, I just wrote game two, long yawn negate. I guess he negated my long yawn and I had to recover from it, but I did and won the game. Oh, maybe he, or maybe he like, maybe you, you active, you started with long one and it got negated and you just went cool. Normal summon Mo Yi. Yeah, I don't know exactly what the context there was, but... You don't remember what the context was. Yeah, anymore. that that is what I wrote down. And game three, I lost to deck out right before time. Oh, no! <laughs> yeah, Runic Sprite is pretty good at that. The deck out, yeah. It's, it's pretty brutal. I mean, that's what Runic does is deck out. Now, keep in mind is that I showed up at my table for round one 15 minutes late. Uh-oh. Yeah, there was pairings issues. So everyone showed up like 15 minutes late. No, no, only like 200 people. Oh my God. Out of like a 3000 player event. So hold on. So that means that your first round, your first game was only, I'm bad at math, like 25 no, minutes no, long? No, no, well, I said, I said it was right before time, but they gave us a 15 minute extension. Oh, okay. Okay. So, yeah. it, so was, it was still 40 minutes. 45. 45, yeah. Thank yeah. you. I, I forgot. I forgot they had that rule. Yeah. Uh, YCS round two. I played against Kashira. Ooh. I drolled him game one, and game two got a little bit grindier. He did hit me with an anti spell fragrance, which was a little bit weird for me because he's on Kashira and he's running like twenty something spells, and I'm on Sword Soul and running like six. And you don't even need your spells. No, I don't. Like, I've literally seen you have your spells and then just pitch them. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. 
Or, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, game game one, I drolled him, and he basically scooped. Yeah. Game two, he... Anti-spelled you. Yeah, anti-spelled me, and then proceeded to try to book a moon one of my monsters, and I was like, ah, you can't anti-spell. Yeah. And then he went to his turn and tried to activate cast your birth, and I said, huh, can't anti-spell. Yeah. And I just played Curry Kara Control until I won the game. Yeah. Bro, anti-spell, my guy, you anti-spelled. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of a crazy thing. I was I was looking at my hand of, like, nothing but monsters, and I'm like, oh. Bro, it's at that point, you just, like, play protect the anti-spell. Right. <laughs> protect your opponent's anti-spell. <laughs> um, Round three, I played against Naturia. Game one, I literally just made the board and mm-hmm. couldn't break it. Game two, I saw no engine. Oh, no. And I had to, How? I had to use Vishuda and Valor to make Baxia, or Vishuda and Valor to make Chishao. Okay, I was about to say. How how does Baja help you there? It doesn't, but Chishao does, and yeah, Chishao yeah. fixed the whole combo for me. Excellent, good. That's so. what he's there for. How did you not see any engine? You, I literally had to special Vishuda, normal Valor. To make Chi Shao. Huh. I mean. Oh, yes, it's horrible. Hey, you gotta do what you. Hey, it, it worked. It did. I had a bunch of hand traps. Uh oh. That does help. Yeah, I mean, I, I just had like multiple imperms, Ash. The, yeah, the Valor, obviously. Or, no, not Ash, Valor, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, kind of crazy. Huh. All right. Next round, round four, I played against Kashira. Uh, I lost game one because he just had better cards than me. It happens. And I lost game two. Um, I, he, he uh, I like normal summon Mogi activate effect, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. In the standby, though, he had drolled me. Or no, not in the standby. I did something and he drolled me. I was like, Maybe, or I activate emergence and yeah, he drolled me. Drolled you on the emergence. I was like, that's crazy. I just want to die now. I mean, fair, because then you can't, you don't. So, that, so then you don't get your sword soul engage. Essentially, yeah. Yeah. So I wait up draw, turn. Yeah, it's like Mo, you draw and Chi Shao search. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, I feel that. Yeah, I, you know when we went to when we went to game two. I think he actually brought the drolls in because they're surprisingly effective. They can't. It they can be. It really depends. Right. Because if you open up Mo, if you don't need to do any of your spell cards, and mm-hmm. you just go and all of a sudden Mo Yi, the only place to control you is after Chi is after the chain where Chi after Chi's out searches in here. I get your search and draw. At that point, it's like, cool, yeah. you drolled me. Oh well. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and I think that the. Other things specifically about Droll there is that um, I, I think that also having the ability to turn off my pot of desires Ooh. at the end of the combo can really help out yeah. to keep me from deep drawing into hand traps. And it makes it to where what would normally be a board with like a four or five card hand yeah. turns into a board with like a one card hand. Yeah. So it just gets significantly worse. So round five, I played against kind of like a, it was like a dragon link branded deck, branded, branded dragon link. Uh, it's not important. The important part is game one. I crimson bladered him for game. Yeah, crimson bleeder. <laughs> yeah. And round game two went kind of long. We ended up nibbing each other multiple times. Bro. Yeah, he nibbed me game one and two. And I was just like, dude, only time I saw a nib all weekend. Bro. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I did end up winning that match because nib tokens are big. Yeah. Round six, I played against Labyrinth. Okay. I got two owed hard bro yeah i got 2-0'd real hard by labyrinth uh game one he activated goes in match so i lost and oh, game yep. two he activated goes in match so i lost again yep 
that'll do it. I made it a little closer though by attacking with his lava golem a bunch, but he had control of the game. Yeah, no, Gozen is rough on you, dude. It's rough on Sword Soul, dude. Yeah, it's really brutal. But there's also a crazy story that goes along with the Labyrinth player, which is that we were at the event playing and we get done. He goes to pick up his deck. Mm -hmm. He puts all the cards back in his deck box. Sets it on my play mat because I, after the game ended, I was kind of frustrated. I just wanted to play on my phone for a bit and de decompress. Mm -hmm. So I'm there sitting there playing on my phone and dude sets his deck box on my mat. And I'm just like, eh, yeah, he'll come back for it. You know, like he'll, you know, he'll pack up the rest of his stuff and then grab it at the yeah. end. He packs up his pens, his dice, his calculator, and his play mat and stuff, and then zips his bag up and walks off with his oh. max rarity labyrinth oh. deck. With CRs? CRs, Starlight. Oh. Yeah, he had Starlight Ladies. He had the CR. Bro. Every, yeah, it was everything. It was max all the way, even all the traps. Everything was maxed. Bro. Yeah, it was disgusting. And I just like looked up and he was just like, gone into the sea of people. I looked around for a minute. I was just like, a judge? You know, and they come to the table and they look at me and like, what is it? What's yeah, up? What, what's going on? And I told him, I was like, my opponent left his deck box. And they're like, what do you mean? I was like, yeah, look, here's my table. Here's my name. Here's my opponent's name. Here's all the information. But like. He left his deck box at the. He just packed everything and left his deck box. Yeah, the judges literally were like, "Was he mad?" And I was like, "No, he should have been in a great mood. He two owed me." Yeah. And they're like, "Oh, oh, I have no idea then." Just, just please be sure he gets it. Yeah, yeah. The judges assured me that they were gonna call him up to the stage and he was going to get it. Now I don't have any confirmation of that, but you know, I like to think that he got his cards. I would ass I would assume so. Yeah. Um the Bro. the other crazy thing that happened at YCS LA, the guy that ended up winning the event, his name is Pauly Aronson. Mm -hmm. Said he's busy with work, didn't have time to test or anything. He just kind of knew the decks he knew. Yeah. But what was very funny is right before the event, mm -hmm. he was in the taxi on his way to the event, and he just casually like Earlier that morning, had put a bottle of water in his backpack. Oh, no. It, it came open. Oh, no. Ruined all of his cards. Oh, no. Yeah. So, Bro. he ended up being able to... This is at 8.45. Round starts at 9. He was able to, like, go around and yes, rebuild the deck Yes, he scrounged together the entire deck. Wow. That's impressive. It really is. So, yeah. Okay, so round seven. Uh, I decided to start taking pictures and videos. Oh, so you dropped around six? Yeah, I mean, I was 3-3. Three, three. I didn't see a ton of reason to keep playing in the main event. You Fair. Know? So I stopped doing the main event. I really just, from there, I just went in and played uh, a couple of friendlies here and there. I yeah. talked to some people that I knew, and I just took lots of pictures and lots of videos. As one does? Yeah. So... I'm really excited because we should have a vlog coming together for my trip. Awesome. So I'm really, be, really excited for that. Be looking out for that. Yeah, absolutely. We're hoping to have that up by like next weekend, something like that. Yeah, it's a lot of footage. So with that said, uh, I do want to give some overall like kind of thoughts about YCS London and mm -hmm. LA. And then I want to talk, talk about the format for a little bit. Sure, sure, sure. So YCS London specifically, um, I had a wonderful time. I, I think the biggest shock thing to me, like culture shock thing, was the prevalence of trains. Yeah, there was just it was, you could get on a train and go anywhere, at least in central London. You could literally anywhere. It really is insane to me how extensive their underground system is. And how efficient it is, and it baffles my mind that people just don't want that here. Yeah, yeah. It really, it's very, very crazy to me. I like trains. I, I, I do actually just think trains are cool, personally. Mm-hmm. But that's also 
entirely because of uh, video games uh, when I was growing up were like, yo, check out this really cool train. There's like that one Final Fantasy where you punch a train as a bo that's a boss. Reminds me of um, reminds me of the Demon Slayer movie. Fair, Mugen Train. Good movie. Yeah, great movie. But like, but no, 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 no. And like one of your characters can just, one of your uh, party members can just do a suplex. So you can suplex the train. I mean, who wouldn't want to suplex a train to be fair? I don't. I don't want to suplex a train. I mean, I would give it a shot at least. No, the train is innocent. We don't know that. It's the driver who's a bad conductor. The, I mean, light, if, the so electricity what, gets to so him, it just stops. Say, so what happens if a lightning bolt strikes the train at the very end? Well, no, no, no. I was about to say, so when the electricity hits him, it just stops. He's a what terrible conductor. Um, if lightning bolt strikes a train that's two miles long, how long does it take before it reaches and kills a driver, provided that he's yeah. a good conductor? Yeah, good. An old, uh... Oh. Uh, you can do it. Oh, no. I was literally... Ryze was about to say his name. Well, I believe that you can get the information out there. Because uh, I also have brain farts sometimes. And I think it's funny when other people have them. Yeah, yeah. It's... Oh, my God. I have, I have so many brain farts. One second. Google foo away. Is it a card from the newest set what uh what do you mean card from the new set bo burnham that that that, that, that was a reference to new math by bo burnham so i got i got distracted by my own thoughts whoopsie and i for a second there i lost the bo burnham train of thought yeah. And <laughs> train of thought. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. All right. Okay. All right. Well, listen, everybody, listen. It's been a great episode. I've had fun. No, um, <laughs> no, I got distracted by my own train of thoughts and I started thinking about, like, I thought you were looking up a card. Oh, no, 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 no. Bo, I was looking up Bo Yeah, Bo no, I, I, I know that now, but I, I got, like I said, distracted by my own thoughts. Uh, but bigger. overall, like, just to start out, I think that the biggest thing that was culture shock to me was the prevalence of yeah. trains. All the trains. Yeah, yes. it was like a dozen train lines, and you could get Ooh. anywhere in London in like 20 minutes. Nice. Yeah, man, sometimes a little bit more, but... Uh, I, it probably depends. Yeah, we literally, we got we got on the train at on the Elizabeth line. Mm -hmm. So, like, the London listeners are going to, like, understand this perfectly. Mm -hmm. uh, we got on the train on the... We got on the Elizabeth line at Custom House, which is, like, right by where... Uh, the venue and our hotel was and you could ride the elizabeth line through most of london and it ends at heathrow airport but there's like you don't ever go to heathrow because there's like better ways to do it but you know mm -hmm. whatever so from from the custom house though we go up like two stops over to like tottenham spur or something or tottenham court or whatever yeah and you go from there up to the district line i think and then you take that to westminster mm -hmm. and that's where and then you walk out the train station and you look up it's like oh wow that's that's big ben oh huh like that's that's the whole thing and it is right there cool yeah it was very cool it was very cool uh and then you it's like okay well we're at big ben let's go see the bridge and we like you walk up to the bridge and it's like Yep, it's a bridge. There's the Eye of London, the big uh, Ferris wheel that you see in the movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, okay, well, there's the Eye of London, and then we'll turn around and we'll walk like another block and a half. And it's like, oh, well, there's Westminster Abbey. Huh. And then you walk like five blocks. And it's like, oh, there's Buckingham Palace. Walk another like five blocks the other way. There's Trafalgar Square. Turn around, go, about, go a block back from Trafalgar, and then you've got... Uh, what we found out, according to the sign on the front door, is the best pub in all of London. <laughs> Listen, I'm pretty sure every pub has that sign. No, they were the only one. Surprising. And I, I guess, I mean, they said it was like rated by something, but <sighs> whatever. I guess they have. I guess. I guess they. Ha guess Jell Old England's got like a pub review board. <laughs> Potentially. So. Um, 
no, I just, I overall, I just had a great time. It was, it was nice to be able to just walk around and do things. I felt like it was like a walkable city, mm -hmm. which is not something that I, I have felt in a very, very long time. Oh yes. Cause our, our home, our, our, the city we live in right now doesn't have sidewalks. Yeah. It's not really much of a city. It's like barely a village. No, 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 no. We have the population for a full city. Barely, but we do. Okay, I'm not going to cut the recording, but... Yeah, it just... Yeah. Yeah, I saw. I saw. But, uh... Yeah. Yeah, it, like, it just... It just was... It just did that, too. So... That was a good time. So we made good timing on that. I'm sure to give another clap whenever you sit back down. <laughs> Bro. Well, that was a good clap. Yeah. What were we talking about? Oh, you were just talking about uh, walkable city, sidewalks. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, it was great to just be like, have a walkable city, sidewalks. It was just a very nice change of pace. Like I said, I mean, you could just go like five blocks this way, five blocks that way, find a subway underground entrance anywhere you want. And every entrance had a, like a helpful person just like standing there, making mm -hmm. sure people weren't like jumping the turnstiles. Yeah, it was great. I could get my phone out, walk up to the turnstile, tap my phone. And uh, like, I don't know if Androids has this, but iPhones have like the tap to pay. Yeah, no, Androids have it too. Okay. So I had to just have my credit card stored in my wallet. Yeah, and you can just go bing. Yeah, you go bloop. And it just uh, pays for it for me. Yeah. And you get, literally, you go up, you pay. It's five pounds and some change, whatever. Mm -hmm. And when you walk up and pay, it's like, okay, well, it's, we're going to charge you five pounds. And now you can go anywhere in London today. Hmm. So, it's, it, I mean, it's, it's insane. It's honestly incredible. It's just the idea of me saying, okay, well, I have like three options, right? I can take a bus, but buses suck because they stop like every block. Or I can go from a bus to a car. Don't, can't drive myself because I'm in London. Fun fact, but by I the can way. Get a cab. Fun fact real quick. Five pounds because I looked it up. Just now, it's like six USD. It's like six bucks. Yeah, yeah. It's like 80 cents to the dollar. Something like that, yeah. So, um, but it's like, okay, well, I can take a car or I can take the train or I can like walk or whatever, bicycle. Mm -hmm. But it's just like taking the train is just cheap, the cheapest, fastest way to travel. Yeah. And, and it just baffles me that we just don't have them everywhere in America. To be fair. There are some places where that's just not feasible, like in Florida. That is true. Because if you dig down, it's just all water. Water and mud. That's it. Water, mud, and clay. Yeah. And here in Louisiana, you dig down, water, mud, clay. Yeah, but I think the counterpoint to that is then you just don't do it all underground. You just do it all above ground. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. But then, you know, but then... You come with the then at that point you come into an issue of well, how do you incorporate that into a city where everything's already been plopped down? Yeah, yeah. It my does counterpoint make it more difficult. My counterpoint to that it's always been monorail. Yeah, that could work. Where it's kind of above everything and it's got a little platform you walk up to. Yeah, yeah. But that was kind of my idea when I said like make it above ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But overall, I would say London itself is a city. 10 out of 10, dude. I would go back so fast in a heartbeat. Um, London is, always, is one of those cities I do want to visit, but it's like kind of low on that list. To be fair, the list is only like, is like very, very short. And London's kind of on the lower end on that list. Yeah, I, I've i always wanted to see London, but it's never been high on my list of places to see. But hilariously, Ireland and Scotland are higher than London. I mean, I could see that. I, I was talking to a lady on one of my flights that was from Northern Ireland. Ooh. Yeah, she was uh, She was an extremely nice woman. Uh, 
the flight the flight there was really nice uh i had so i the where i sat on the plane mm -hmm. the plane is a uh 343 configuration right oh it's so like three on the sides then four in the middle seats yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so basically it's 10 seats across yeah but because of right where my seat was like situated mm -hmm. on the flight there the very last row of seats in my in that particular section because mm -hmm. they have different sections of the plane yeah you know they have like the first business class and then like the second business class or whatever yeah. and like a little bit of not economy but also not business yeah something like that and then they have just like economy which mm -hmm. is where i was and it's there's not a lot of leg room it's really really small mm -hmm. cramped space but the lady i was sitting next to was very very nice and for whatever reason in my particular section there was only two seats in the back row oh so i essentially ended up with like a whole extra seats worth of space on this side yeah so you can kind of yeah so like if i needed to like go dig in my backpack to grab something it was way easier yeah so that was really nice now the flight at home the flight home sucked um there was a lady sitting nearby to me that was very smelly Ugh. And Great. on top of that, um, the lady in front of me just, I mean, I was literally, I had my seat back, like not the seat back. I had my like tray table down because you've never been on a plane. So I'll kind of explain it, but essentially you have, you're sitting in the seat. Yeah. You have there's a, a tray you, have, you can. Yeah. There, there you have your, the person in front of you and there's a little tray on the back of their seat. Yeah. It's they so, can let down like a little yeah. lap desk. Yeah. It's so like you can sit down on your laptop if you need to, or it's what it was specifically designed for though, was for you to put your food down whenever they, if they bring you food. Yes. Yes. Which they, they do do most flights. They do bring you some sort of food or refreshment on almost any flight. Yeah. What kind of food you get though? I am aware. It depends on how long the flight is. Yes, that is very true. So for example, our flight about an hour in, when we got up to like cruising altitude, like 32, 33,000 feet, the stewardesses came around and they gave us on the way there. It was like a, we had the choice of pasta or of like a vegetarian option. Mm -hmm. And the pasta had like a red meat sauce. It was pretty good. Ooh, that does sound good. It was actually surprisingly good. Um, and then about an hour, hour and a half before we landed, they came by and gave us breakfast because it was like five o'clock in the morning UK oh. time. And the breakfast was like a little yogurt cup with like different like granolas and stuff you can put in Ooh, there. That sounds really good. It was pretty solid. I still got something when I got off the plane because I'm a fatty, but, <laughs> but you know, it was good. Um, and on the way back, they gave us, it was like a, like, uh, they had like chicken meatballs and Ooh. mashed potatoes and green beans. Ooh. And then, like, it, it, it all comes with, like, a soda or a side or whatever. Yeah. And then the second meal is just, like, a little chicken, uh, like, a chicken salad sandwich. Ooh, that sounds really good. And the chicken salad sandwich was, like, fine. Ah. Uh, it wasn't good chicken salad. Oh, fair it wasn't, enough. You know, like, chicken salad is almost, like... It's almost like uh, like tuna salad where it's like shredded. Yeah. It was chunks. Oh. Yeah. It, it almost wasn't like chicken salad. It was almost just like chicken with like lots of mayo and lettuce and stuff. Yeah, that's not chicken salad. Okay. Well, it, it wasn't particularly good. I know that. Like, if they called it chicken salad, that that's just an insult to chicken salad. Well, they didn't say <laughs> that. They just said chicken or vegetarian. So. Oh, fair enough. Fair enough. But they all... It does pretty much no matter what flight you go on, as long as it's not like a cut rate airline, like Spirit or yeah. Frontier apparently is like the worst airline in the world. Oh, I always thought it was Spirit. You know, I always thought it was Spirit too, but at least Spirit lets you have a checked bag. Fair. That's fair. Yeah. As far as I'm aware anyway. Yeah. No, Frontier doesn't even let you have a checked bag, which is a wild thing to me because I can pay $25 more for the flight to nationals. It's like my options are... Uh, Frontier, Sky Blue, and Delta. Mm -hmm. Now, I've never heard of Sky Blue or Sky West or whatever it's called. And I've not heard anything really significant about 
um, that one that I was just talking about in my head. Frontier? Yeah, Frontier. Yeah. I've never heard anything like significant about Frontier. I've never heard that they're terrible. But as far as I can tell, they are. Rough. Yeah. So, uh, I overall, though, I had a really amazing time. Um, I, I want to go back so bad. There were so many fun people that I met uh, and got to see again. Huge shout outs, of course, to Skyhawk and Darth Nash and, you know, Caitlin and Crook and, you know, Haley and everybody that I met over there, you mm-hmm. know? Maxine was there, solemn. Uh, Sebto. It was just, it was a wonderful experience that I'm really going to cherish for like the rest of my life. Awesome. Yeah. Um, do you want to talk just for a minute about the meta implications themselves? Sure. So we talked about Kashira mm-hmm. being the num- the number one deck in the room. Right. It had the most players playing the deck. It was without a doubt the deck to beat. So my question is, Mm -hmm. we mentioned earlier we might have a ban list soon. Mm -hmm. What do we think is the problem here? (laughs) Oh my God. So the issue, like one of the biggest issues with Cash Tira is until they present a board, you, you have no idea what board they're going to attempt to build. Yeah, that, that is that is an issue with Cash Tier. You're absolutely correct. So you could be sitting there with a Nibiru in a hand be like, I got them, and they just make her eyes hard pass. Yeah. They literally go like, summon Fenrir effect, summon Unicorn effect, make her eyes hard pass. Yeah. And you're just like, oh. Or they might just go full ham and try to lock out all your zones, and you're just like, cool, during the infect, uh, then there's like, in, uh, attempt, uh, Pass and you're like before the before the end of main nib and the Indians get their goat. Yeah, yeah. I mean it's wild, which presents an interesting game within a game within a game, a meta within the meta, if you will. There always has been one. We're just not a member of the Discord server that they, that all the pros talk about the meta within the meta within the meta within the meta. Yeah. Um, specifically with Cash Tira players, it's do I go for the full board here or do I just make a rise heart pass? Because sometimes a rise heart pass is enough. Uh, yeah, I mean a fair amount of time. I, I think it's a really interesting dynamic because you saw, at the YCS the deck profile, Polly Aronson, which huge shout out to Polly, uh, good job on the tournament. Uh, mm-hmm. It's awesome, of course. But as far as the his method, he went for like the intermediate board every time, which is Shang, which is Shang Ra'ira and a rise heart pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the Lava Golem, the Lava Golem board. Yes, it's, as I like to call it. Yeah, for sure. Um, where they lock out like three year zones, maybe four. Right, right. They really push it. I don't think that Lava Golem will have the best impact going forward. Just like I don't think Nibiru will have the best of impacts going forward. But I mean, if they keep just a Rise Heart. Passing, you're probably better off just sticking with the uh, with the uh, kaiju's. Yeah, I think I would agree with that. Or Curry Car, Div Incarnate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think though that if you're going to like mess with the deck and hit the deck, I think you have to hit Diablosis. Yeah, you gotta hit. So like the thing is that even if you ban Diablosis, they'll just kind of shrug and basically keep doing what they've been doing, but they just won't attempt to block lock down your entire board anymore it does remove one of their options but they still have two other very powerful options yeah which is shanger era uh shanger era or rise heart pass or just rise heart pass yeah i it really can't be hesitated like that like a rise heart pass is not bad not at all particularly because they have all that follow-up in their hand plus all the hand traps that they might have access to in, in the interim yeah exactly so it's rough <laughs> Uh, I think that the runic variants are really, really underestimated. Overall, I like the runic core. The more I I play it, the more I use it, mm-hmm. the more familiar with it I get. And uh, I know that that's not really like a big thing to a lot of people, because you always have those players that play like a different deck at every event. 
I can't do that. <laughs> yeah, I just I don't have a desire to. To be fair, I'm also the. To be fair, I am also the dude who's who's played one, two, three, like four or five decks in the past year. I think I've only played one. I've played two. Yeah, I think it's just been sorts of for me this whole time. Yeah, well, because I think at the start uh, about this point last year, you were on. You were still on. Uh, no, 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 no. You had just switched about three months ago. So about a year and three months ago was when you were on um on uh what was the deck? Uh Bird Up. Not Bird Up though. It was post Bird Up. Like Zoo Brigade? Might have been Zoo Brigade? I'm not sure. Or no 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 no. It was Tri Brigade Lair Lusk. Straight up Tri Brigade Lair Lusk. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then, and then after, and then like after the ban list hit, you just went, "Oh, Sword Soul, it is. Let's go, woo, Sword Soul." So, I want to go ahead and wrap the episode up and talk to our patrons. What do you say? Yeah, let's do that. All right. So, a huge thank you, of course, to all of our patrons. Thank you to Panic and Skywalker, Cam Yang, Kane Martin, Zyphorus, Blackwing, Silver in the Ascent is the best floodgate. Caleb. Thou hast seemeth to have forgotten Dark Magician, multi-classes into Paladin and Fighter. <laughs> yeah. uh, cards, Goetia, uh, Earth Machine, Best Deck, Epi, Has Anyone Actually Read Toy Vendor, HH Cyber, I Am McLincoln, If All You Have Is a Cosmic, Every Problem Looks Like a Floodgate, Monstratron, Mountain Man, Oatmeal Spaghetti, Owen Alvarado, S uh, Silver Hope, Unbanned number 95, Konami, understanding and reading are two different things. Virtually Saviors, World Rogue, and Tier 2 are the polite terms for bad deck. Aaron Garner, Asami, Ashless Cheps, Atsuya, Sympath the Silver Castle, Boxwine, Come On and Get Your Game One, Duty Booty, Dragon Maid, Less Behavior, Dragon Maid, Stun Zed, Amapatsu Rika, Glamour, Tribute for Costies, Plant Nuts in Your Mouth, Cam, the Hockey Walkie Slash Mixer, Old Man Red, Pin Code 143, Slaking It Up, and Valence, Hojo Mama. Thank you all so much for your continued support of the podcast. It's a bit shorter one today, but that's because we started really late because I forgot yeah. to charge the phone battery. So Camera battery. Yeah, well, you know what I mean. <laughs> so, of course, everybody, a huge, huge thank you to tuning in with um, tuning in with us and uh, just listening to us, listening to us ramble for a little while. Mm -hmm. So, with that said, have a great week, everybody. Fare thee well, travelers. <laughs>